How's it going? Harvesting the Aztec corn today. It's just behind me here And I thought I'd bring you along and show you what some of the kernel corn looks like it's, it's not a sweet variety that you just rip off the plant and start tucking into it can be used in cooking in soups and stews and that sort of things There's a few people have informed me. Thank you very much But it's generally something that's kept for um, flour making or even popping you can use it as a popcorn So I've been told I accidentally broke a stalk the other day and I ripped off a couple of um, cobs when a mate was here and we hoed into it and it does have a very slight sweet flavour to it, but it's mainly a starchy. It's got a, a starchy taste to it. Uh, one of the kids actually took it home and munched on it on the car ride home. Apparently he enjoyed it. So it's it's not something we'll be boiling up and putting uh, next to a salad on the plate, that's for sure. So I'll give you a bit of a look at the corn itself and yeah, I'll rip a couple of cobs off. Just to show you the different flowering parts on the plants, up the top here you have the tassels. This is the male part of the plant. Those little pods are full of pollen. And what they do is they drop down. They drop down onto the silks themselves. Now these silks here, they're nice and soft when they first come out, they feel almost slightly damp. And what happens is the pollen will come down onto these, each individual strand of those silks will actually form into a kernel down within the cob itself. So that's why when sometimes you'll open up a cob of corn you'll find a kernel or two missing. That's because these little silks haven't been pollinated. That's why a lot of people recommend planting out the block method like we have here. We have close to 50 plants in a metre square, which is probably a little bit too intense. But yeah, I thought I'd give it a crack and it appears to have done all right. How to tell when it's ready? Well, I'm definitely no expert at that at all. I've had a look online. Uh, there's a couple of different ways mentioned. Some people have talked about slitting the cob itself, opening it up and seeing if the kernels are ready. Other people have said when these tassels are dry and they pull out easily, it's ready. Other people say once these are just dry, it's ready. Uh, one gentleman who looked like he was a professional corn grower, he said the best way to tell is when the years start to bend down from the actual stalk itself. So with this stuff here, because we're not growing it for sweetness, I'm not too worried if it's been on there too long. But if you're after a nice sweet cob, it's great to get it in its prime. Just when it's ripe, that's when you'll have the optimal sugars in the sweet corn. So, so I'll get to picking some of this corn and we'll see what it turned out like. This corn cob here has been hit by caterpillars. So what's happened is they've come and laid the eggs in the top of the silks and then they've travelled down into the corn itself and yeah, they've had a bit of a feast on the corn. So the remedy for this is once the silk's set and after you're fairly sure that they've been pollinated, you just come out and you spray it with something like a BT. Um, over here, the brand name's Dipole. Um, it's a bacterial um, insecticide and it kills the caterpillar. I got to this one a bit late after Dale from the Media Maker 2000 channel, thank you Dale, it reminded me that it was a good idea to do it. Um, he's seen Bobby do it on the MHP Gardener channel so he recommended I get out here and I gave it a bit of a squirt and hopefully it's knocked all the other um, caterpillars on the heads in the other corn. So just thought I'd show you that. Here's just a bit of a look at the damage that they actually do. Yeah, not too bad on this one. Most of the corn's going to be fine. Some of these corns have formed some really nice heads on them, so I'm just pulling a couple down and we'll see what they look like. So there we go. There's a nice look at this corn and all the silks that run down. One to each kernel. So that's a pretty nice looking piece of corn. That's rather impressive. They've all got a bit of a brown or a pink tinge to them. Uh, now all these different cobs are going to look slightly different, so I'll pull open a few more and just to give you a bit of a look. Put them to one side. We'll go this big one here. So there again, another another beautiful looking piece of corn. Oh, pull all the silks off. And as you can see, there's nice pollination right there. All those kernels are nicely formed. Take those silks off. Look at that, that's pretty spectacular. Actually it looks like it's dried out a little bit. So it looks like you might have a little bit of damage on top there. But looking at that, I mean the kernels, it looks like there's not too many holes, if any. Um, yeah, that's a nice spectacular piece of corn in my book. So I'm going to go through and open up a few others and we'll see what they look like. There's another one in here I had my eye on. I thought looked a bit interesting. This one here. This one here has got a funny little um, spear out the top. It almost looks like it's got the male part of the flower forming in the middle of the cob. So it looked like he was drying and he's actually um, fallen over on the 
stem itself, so I thought I'd pull him off and we'll have a look at him. So that one there is a bit different again. He's got a bit of a black kernel there, some nice burgundy-ish sort of ones, and even some variegated kernels, so yeah, it's a little bit strange. So there's a bit of a look at the selection, the colouring of this Aztec corn. Most of this will probably end up drying out and we might try and use some to make flour with. We'll just wait and see. Um, we're going to at least try one lot in, in a soup and see how that goes as was suggested. Um, yeah, but I'd say the bulk of it will probably end up as being popcorn. So the remainder of the cobs left on the, the stalks out here, I pretty much will just let dry on the plants, I think. And that way we'll know they'll be nice and dry for seed saving as well as for popping later, so. So we thought we'd better do a bit of a taste test. So I've got my guinea pig here and we'll just try out this piece, see what it tastes like. Well, only very slightly sweet. It does have a corny flavour, but it feels a bit pasty, a bit flowery to me. Do you want to have a small bite? Just a small bite. Very hard, isn't it? It's a very hard skin corn. I think it may actually be a flint corn. <laughs> Come on, mighty mouse. Don't break your teeth. You got a little bit? What do you think? It's very hard. It doesn't taste like anything, really. You don't think it has a taste? No. So I must say, I'm mighty impressed with that little harvest. The glass gem corn down the back, well, hopefully I'm going to learn any lessons I need to learn growing this Aztec stuff out the front, because I'd really like some nice spectacular glass gem corn cobs to harvest. Um, just not only for decoration, but also we will end up eating them and saving the seeds for another year's crop as well. Also plan on trying some Balinese sweet corn as well. I bought some seeds after it was recommended to me by Dave. Thank you very much, Dave. So they'll be going in a little bit later on in the year after the silks have all been fertilised from the glass gem down the back there. We're very lucky, we can grow pretty much all straight through to um, probably April, just because of our subtropical climate, so we'll end up with three crops of corn, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. So, there you go. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope you all have a great one and take it easy. Catch ya!